Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to our Christmas Eve countdown workout session. Hope you guys are doing well tonight. Get up off out of your chairs. Let's warm up. Let's do a little stringing of the lights. Great. For those of you that need a modified version, my friend Megan here will be doing that this evening. For those of you that are a little more advanced, my friend Andrew will be doing that as well. All right, let's stretch out those arms to place the, tr the star on the tree. There you go. Really stretch those arms out. Perfect. And reach. And reach. Great, all right. Now that we've got the star on the tree, let's put a little tinsel and do a little hop with that. Little tinsel. And again, perfect. All right, let's switch sides to get the other side of the tree. All right. Great job. Perfect. Way to go. Back to the front. All right. Now we're going to take the turkey out of the oven. We're gonna do a little squat and take the turkey out. Are you ready? Here we go. And squat, take your turkey out. And squat, take your turkey out. And squat, take your turkey out. Awesome. For those of you that have a double decker oven, you can do the modified version with Megan. For those of you that have a 45 pound turkey, you'll need to do the same thing that Andrew's doing. All right. Now, let's add a little twist to put the turkey on the counter. And twist, and twist, and twist, and twist. Awesome. Now that the food's ready and we're eating, let's go to the mall to buy our last minute presents. You ready? And we're gonna drive to the mall. And drive to the mall. Perfect. All right. We are looking for a parking spot. Let's go to the left. All right. And for those angry drivers, you can follow Andrew. For those that need a little modified and handicap, yeah, follow Megan. She'll get you to the handicap spot. Perfect. And back to the front. Oh, and go to the right. I found one to the right. Perfect. And let's pull into our spot. All right. Now. We're gonna go hit that sail. Are you ready? Let's pick it up. Pick it up. Let's pick it up. That sweater, is it gonna stay on sale for much longer? We gotta go get that for grandma. All right. And back to the front. Perfect. And then let's go to the next store. Awesome. All right. We got our sweater. Let's drive back home. Are you ready? Driving home. We gotta get there. Let's go. Fast driving. And here we go. Now, we're gonna really wrap those presents. We gotta wrap them fast. Wrap those presents fast. Wrap those presents fast. There we go. Wrap those presents fast. Perfect. All right. We're almost there. You guys are doing great. How's everybody feeling? We're all doing good? All right. Let's go. And put the present under the tree. Are you ready? Present under the tree. Present under the tree. And really lunge. No, it's Christmas Eve. I gotta go. What? What? Oh no. We gotta go too. Come on, you guys. Let's go. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Honey, it's Christmas Eve. I know, but these antlers are giving me a headache. Oh, listen, hey, we're here with all of our family, our church family, our kids. What could be better? It is going to be a great night, and we really hope that you guys can enjoy it with us. Uh, we're going to be in our pajamas. But can you tell me where you got this shirt and why you chose this? 
Well, I got this because Frodo Baggins was sold out. And so I had to get Baby Yoda, Baby which Yoda. is fine too. I'm all right with that. Yep, yep, yep. For so sure. anyway. Well, I'm excited. I hope we're going to sing some Christmas carols. I think we're going to do that right now. Okay, let's yeah. go. Let's right. sing some Enjoy carols some together. Enjoy some singing. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and Sing. We will sing, sing, sing. Joy to the world. We will sing, sing, sing. Joy to the world. The same. The new born king. 
Prince of Peace. Hail the Son of Righteousness, light and life to all He brings, risen with healing in His wings. Hey kids, I'm Miss Sally and I am here with my kids. I have Sam and Sadie and Julia. Say hello. Hi. Hi. Well, we're excited because we want to decorate a Christmas tree with you. So you should have this, this little bag right here with some supplies in it. If you don't have it handy, go grab it. And we're gonna show you how to get started. So Sam, will you do the honors please? You should have the tree and then there's a handy little stand in here. He's gonna get it set up. There you go. And he's gonna be kind of fixing the pine needles here for us. And you should have five different wrapped ornaments. Do not open them yet, because we are going to be revealing them one by one as we decorate our tree. Okay, all set? We love decorating a Christmas tree in our family, don't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we have a little bit of a tradition that we always- Yeah, we decorate it every Sunday after Thanksgiving. We do, every Sunday after Thanksgiving. And this year we got a real tree. We don't usually do that. And we had a bit of a hiccup. We were sitting in the house, doing our distance learning, going about our day, when all of a sudden I heard a thud. What happened? It was the Christmas tree. It fell over. There were lights, pine needles, and ornaments everywhere. Yes, ornaments broken. I come into the room and I am not worried about the mess, but I am worried about the ornaments because I'll tell you, the first thing out of my mouth was, Julia, did your first Christmas ornament break? Or Sam, did the one that you made at preschool, did that shatter to pieces? Or did grandma's teacup ornament, did it make it? Because the ornaments are precious to us. They tell a precious story. And every year we love to reminisce about the trips we've taken or the milestones we've hit or the loved ones that we can't see at Christmas time anymore. And so ornaments are precious. And here we have ornaments for you that are very precious that will tell you the most precious story at all. So we're excited to walk you through that very story. We have ornament number one. Julia, would you do the honors for me? All right, so ornament number one, it looks like it is... The crown. It's a crown. So the very beginning of a story, a good story, you always know who the story is about. So the way that we can find out what this crown is about is you turn to the very first page in the Bible and the very first verse, and it says, in the beginning was... Adam and Eve. A no, no, close. <laughs> it wasn't Adam and Eve. In the beginning... God. God. God created the heavens and the earth. And because God created everything, he reigns and rules over everything. And we hear that over and over again in the Bible. And so we, I just told you about the first verse in the Bible. Let's go to the very last book of the Bible to show that God still rules and reigns over everything. It wasn't just back then, but let's look at the first one. And <laughs> um, worthy are you, our Lord and God to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they exist and were created god created all things and he is worthy of all of our honor all of our praise all of our worship god rules so the crown represents that god rules so i want you when we put this crown on the tree i want you guys to each think about what just blows your mind when you think, wow, God rules and reigns over that because he created it. What about you, Sam? 
the ocean because it's so big and powerful and majestic. Mm, that's a good one. Julia, what about you? My turtle because it's so cute and unique. Turtles are pretty cute and turtles are winning in 2020 because they've been moving at a slow place, pace their whole lives. What about you, Sadie? A sloth. A sloth. You're on the slow train too. I love it. Okay, who wants to put this crown up? I'll Thank you, it. Sam. So let's put up the crown and let's all say together, what does this crown represent? God, God rules. rules. God rules. Okay, ornament number two. Sadie's gonna open that one for us. And what do we find here? All right, what do you got? What it's is it? It's an X. Okay, Sadie, what do you think that X means? Tic-tac-toe. Tic-tac-toe, that would be fun to have a game tree. Sam, what do you think? Xbox. Okay, a high-tech game tree. I like it, but not the answer I'm looking for, Julia. Um, I'm gonna go with sin. Sin. That's exactly right. That is what this represents, is sin. So remember we talked about God rules. He ruled over everything. And in the beginning of the Bible, he created people. He created Adam and Eve. You guessed that, right? And Adam and Eve could hang out in the most perfect place and do whatever they want except this one thing. They couldn't eat from the tree. What did they do? They ate from the one tree that they couldn't. They did, and that did not please God. That was sin. And unfortunately, what happened was that set off a chain reaction. Adam and Eve's kids sinned, then their grandkids sinned, then generation after generation sinned and sinned and sinned until now, still sinning. It says in Romans 3.23 that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So sin is here. In the world that God created, Adam and Eve sent forth sin and it's still here today. So let's put sin on the tree. What do you think? Yeah, isn't sin kind of a downer to put on a Christmas tree, Mom? <laughs> it is. I can see why you would say that, but hang tight because you gotta know the bad part of the story in order to get to the good part of the story. And here's what we need to remember that God, remember that God rules and he, and he reigns over everything. He was before all things, he created all things, he holds everything together and he is a holy God. He is perfect, he is good, he is beautiful. And a God that good has to punish sin. He can't yeah. let sin go. Think about it, in our house, when something goes wrong, when one of you does something wrong, say it's you, Sadie, what happens when you do something wrong? I normally get a timeout, you, just normal. You get a timeout, that's right. And you have to go in your room and you're not in the same room with us and it's a bummer for everybody. And that's what happens is sin separated us from God. So we can't be with God and God created you and he loves you and he wants to be with you. But let's look at ornament number three to see what happens. Sam. <laughs> A cross. Well, when you see the cross, what do you think of? Jesus. We all think of Jesus. So God has to punish sin. He's a holy God. Sin separates us from him and he wants to be with us. So he provided a way by sending his perfect son, Jesus, as a baby at Christmas. And Jesus came and he lived a perfect life, no sin, yet he died a death and he took on the punishment of your sins and everybody's sins punishments, your sins of the past, your sins of today, your sins of tomorrow. Jesus took on the punishment for all of our sins when he died on the cross so that God could be with us because he loves us that much. What's the verse that reminds you of that? John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing. God loved us so much that he would send his very own son to die a death that we deserve and to take on the punishment for our sins. Jesus is perfect. So let's put that cross on the tree. Where should we put it, Julia? I think we should put it over the sun, covering it. When Jesus died on the cross, that's what happened, right? God doesn't see our sin anymore at all. So we're gonna cover that sin ornament that you were kind of bummed about. Can't even see it, so we're good to go. Now we're gonna move to ornament number four. Okay, let's see what's there. Oh, I think this is the moment you've been waiting for. What is it? The present. It's present. Okay, Sadie, Ooh. what's the present of all presents? Drum set. A drum set, wow. That is a great gift, but it's not the greatest gift. Remember we were talking about Jesus? Well, Julia, I want you to read 
that verse in Romans 6 that we had talked about. It says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Wow, so the wages of sin is death and Jesus paid the price for us, right? But the free gift is that we get to be in the family of God forever. And we get to be in that family forever because of Jesus. Jesus is the greatest gift. Say it with me. Jesus, Jesus is the, the greatest, greatest gift. gift. Say it with me, everybody, one more time. Jesus, Jesus is the greatest, greatest gift. He is indeed. So let's put that present on the tree and celebrate what Jesus did for us. Okay, little drummer girl, here's your moment. Give me a drum roll. We're on our last ornament. Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Okay, ornament number five. It looks like it's a... Oh, they are... Hands. hands. You know what? This ornament is about you. This whole story, when you look back on these ornaments, you see how much God loved you, didn't you? And that God is standing there with his arms open wide, waiting for you to turn to him to turn away from your sin and to turn to him with open arms yourself. That's the thing. What is the verse, Sam? I want you to read it to me in Romans. Romans 10, 9. What does it say? Because if you, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You will be saved. That is good news. If you turn to Jesus, that's the beginning of following Jesus. And so, Sam, why don't you put that, those hands on the tree? Okay, guys, so let's go ahead and review this Christmas ornament story one more time. First ornament was? The crown. The crown. God rules and reigns over everything because he is the creator of all things. Second ornament? The axe. It represents sin, and God has to punish sin because he's a holy God. So what he did was he provided a way through what's our third ornament? The cross. cross. The cross. He sent his perfect son, Jesus, to live a sinless life and to die a death that we deserve, taking on the punishment of sin so that we could be forgiven and be with God forever. And that, my friends, ornament number four is a present. present. It's a gift. It's the best gift of all because Jesus is our greatest gift of all. Without Jesus, we wouldn't be able to be in the presence of God or be forgiven for all of our sins. And so the last ornament tells us what? Hands. It's hands. It shows us that it's up to us. You raise your hands if you believe in Jesus. Yes, at home, raise your hands. We hope you're raising your hands too because Jesus wants a relationship with you. And that is good news. That's the greatest news, isn't it? Well, I hope that at home, this Christmas ornament story is one that will be precious to you that you will tell yourself over and over again and one that you will share with people in your life too. We know we're going to be telling on Christmas, aren't we? Yeah. We sure are. All right. Well, thank you for decorating your Christmas tree with us tonight. We wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bye. Bye. Sleep on the hay. The cattle are lowing, the baby awakes, the dawn of salvation. Beginning
In the beginning, chaos was there. And still today, there's chaos. Like dark churning waters, it swirls our emotions, encircles our hearts, flooding our minds with commotion. The chaos of insecurity, food insecurity, financial insecurity, relational insecurity, the insecurity of the unknown. The chaos of fear, political fear, fear of the unjust, fear for our health, the fear of feeling alone, or just the chaos of not being, not being free, not being essential, not being remembered, just being without meaning. But God created order from the chaos, securing me with his love. He gave purpose to my being coming down from high above. Whenever the chaos begins to surround, I am reminded of Jesus and his hope that abounds. Whenever the chaos rises up in the masses, it is God and his peace that always surpasses. When Jesus was born into our chaos, he took the punishment that brought us peace upon himself. His river of life flowed over us in streams from the cross. He bore our grief, carried our sorrows and loss. And even after he ascended to his rightful place, he left us his peace in order to replace, to replace fear in the chaos of our every days, to bring security and purpose to my today. Therefore, let the peace of Christ rule over the chaos in our lives, that all may be calm and all may be bright. For he is the hope that brings peace into the night. You call me 
days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. And when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told to them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. to share a bit with you about uh, how Jesus has been the calm in my chaos. So I like being a busy person. I really like having lots of things to do. I like to fill my calendar with lots of events and tasks. um, And I really do well when I have a couple projects going at the same time. But that usually means that I fill my time with things before I fill my time with Jesus. And obviously that is super detrimental to my walk with him. And it usually makes me more stressed than at peace. 
So when the first uh, stay at home stay at home order came out, I was still able to go to work, which was such a blessing, but the workload slowed way down and I just didn't really have a lot of stuff to do. And I was st struggling with feeling useless or not able to uh, help at work, or I just didn't really have anything to do. Um, but fortunately, Jesus had me right where he wanted me to be. Uh, and he was preparing me to really come in to his presence and be in his peace and his calm. Um, and I realized that that was actually a, a huge blessing and such a sweet time of fellowship with my family. Um, and and uh, ha it was a really great time to have one-on-one -on -one time with him. And I was really in a place where I had never felt so much peace as this time. Um, and it was simply because there just was nothing else for me to do but to be in his presence, but to uh, be in touch with him, be close to him, and really feel that he was working in my life, that he had a plan, and I felt like I could follow his plan, that I trusted him, uh, and it was so wonderful. And even as things began to pick up at work and in life, um, I still felt that peace, and I, I pulled that, what I learned from the the really isolated times of quiet and peace and pulled that into as life got busier. Um, but then there was a point at work where we had to start making some really big, de big decisions about how we were gonna move forward. Uh, and I really kind of lost sight of Jesus. I got really distracted. I was stressed, I was anxious, I was irritable, and I was questioning God. I was like, why did you take my peace away? Uh, where was this beautiful time that we had? Uh, I loved that. Why isn't it here? Why am I stressed? Why am I anxious? And uh, in his good way, in his uh, gracious way, he reminded me that he didn't take that away from me. He is right here. He's waiting for me to come back to that. And I had gotten caught up in my own problems, in my own thinking that I could solve those problems. And I had strayed away from his presence and from his will. And when I realized that, I wanted it back. I wanted to take it back into my life with me and to work. And I, I did. And those problems at work didn't get solved. The problems in my life didn't just get solved. Uh, but it was so much better for me. I felt like I was actually following His will, and I felt that I had a purpose in work and in life following Him rather than following my own desires and trying to solve my own problems. It's really important to remember, especially during this Christmas season, you know, we're celebrating His birth and His life on earth, but we also need to remember that, you know, He lived, died, and rose again, and now He's alive in heaven with us, and He's with us all the time. He he provides that peace, that calm, that understanding that no one else can, that nothing else can. Um, and it's so important to, to really bask in that, to make time for that. Uh, even in the midst of our chaos, it is important to to really be in that moment. And I know it's difficult. Uh, our lives aren't just magically better because we follow Jesus, but they are so much sweeter when we do make that time, when we're intentional about being with Jesus because He's right there waiting for us. Jesus is the calm in the chaos of our lives. When I think about that, I think the first thing I think about is what Jesus um, isn't. Um, he doesn't say that he is going to change our circumstances um, or that the calm is going to look like what the world tells us calm looks like. Um, I think sometimes we think that like um, solitude or free time um, is calm, but um, that's not what the Bible tells us uh, peace and calm is from Jesus. I think it's cool too that like it's not just in the really big things like in grief and dying. It's like in the small things. Um, I'm a stay-at-home mom and I'm doing distance learning with a kindergartner right now. And it's very chaotic. Like every morning is chaotic. Like where's the worksheets and um, and what do I do with little brother? Um, and Jesus is able to be the calm in that chaos. Um, we were really looking forward to going back to school and we just found out that that's not happening. And uh, yet Jesus is still here. He's here with us in the chaos of today and he will continue to be here with us even if we continue doing distance learning for all eternity. We know that Jesus is, um, surpasses all of that. On the kid front, um, one of the things that we 
started when the boys were young that we did poorly for a long time, but has come back uh, pretty strong in the last six months is is reading uh, through the Bible together with our, our three and our five-year-old sons. And I think in all of this chaos, I think watching my three-year-old and my five-year-old, they understand that, that there's something wrong, uh, that, that there's something not normal, there's something chaotic happening around them. And every night, no matter how late we get home, no matter uh, like what, how how rough it was going through dinner time or bedtime, when they get into their room, no matter their exhaustion level, they want to read the Bible together. And I think that's a really cool opportunity uh, to even while we're going through Old Testament stuff, to be able to point to where Jesus is being foreshadowed and talked about in the Old Testament and how he's coming and is the Savior and the Messiah. When I think about the Christmas story, I think about how Jesus was born into chaos. like the most chaotic of situations like that you could think of to bring a baby into the world, uh, which I think is just another example of how Jesus is different. Um, the peace and calm that he brings is different than what the world um, claims to provide to us. Um, the world tells us that, you know, peace and calm uh, is you know, is whatever we want, whatever makes us happy. Um, but Jesus was born into horrible circumstances, um, like literally running for their lives. Um, and, um, and, and yet um, there was peace um, in that, there was calm in that. Um, God showed his faithfulness and his provision, not only for Jesus's son, um, but later on, um, spoiler alert, uh, Jesus dies for our sins. Um, and so he provides a way for us to have um, eternal life with him. Um, it's just crazy to think about. 2020, I was certain of so many things. Our daughter was gonna graduate from college to be a nurse. I had a big, big birthday. There was gonna be big plans. We were gonna do traveling and None of that was certain. Uh, it was all taken away. And in the big scheme of things, it's not really that big of a deal, but it was our plans, but they weren't God's plans. Um, and so often I still try and do all that myself and I'm not relying on God, um, to be real honest. But this morning, and I was really thinking about it, and a song came to me when I was in the shower, and it's, I cast all my cares upon you I lay all of my burdens down at your feet. And when I, I don't know what to do, I will cast all my cares upon you. And I can cling to that. That's a song I learned as a young child even. Um, and it's so true. And that is what I lean on now is giving it all to God. It, I can't do it on my own and I can't be certain. And he does bring the calm when I do give him my burdens and my fears. Life gets crazy pretty regularly with work, um, with lots of different things. I think about um, probably the biggest thing was when our oldest daughter was preparing to go away to be a missionary. And there was a lot of uncertainty not knowing what to do with that. And I struggled. And everything, for the most part, I was able to deal with it for the most part. But when she left to, to leave Sacramento to go to Wisconsin for the first time, um, I think Jody had been crying for like weeks mm -hmm. beforehand. And, um, and then it came time for her to go and gave her a kiss. And she gave all of us a hug and a kiss. And then she went to the escalator and she went up the escalator and she turned around and she blew a kiss and turned around and went to go catch her plane. And my legs gave away. Um, I was a basket case, I was crying. In the middle of everybody, in the middle of the airport in Sacramento, I was crying, audibly weeping on the floor. Um, never have had an experience like that before. Um, 
Jesus was the calm of my storm in that moment because I was useless. I had nothing. And that's, that's where I found my calm. I, I, it reminds me of what Craig talked about in service just Sunday about, you know, being in the boat and the storm is happening and, and, and the apostles are, you know, saying, Jesus, wake up. That's it. I even think too, sometimes in the everyday things, just like what we're all dealing with now and we're, some of us are confined to the home. Some of us can work. Some of us have to work. Some can't work. Um, sometimes I find just going out and being in God's um, creation. The beautiful trees right now, the leaves that are changing, um, the sunshine, it's just a reminder of God and how he has all of this. This was his huge plan. And what can I learn from that? What am I to learn instead of being fearful or thinking about all the negative? What can I learn? What is, what's he trying to teach me? And to just sometimes walk around the block, just to clear the air and to just cry out to him, say, what, what are you teaching me today? Um, and live each moment. That's helpful. Amen to that. Jesus has been the calm during chaos in my life as being unchangeable. His character has always stayed the same, even when things in my life have changed. So things changed when my parents got COVID and we were all isolating um, in their rooms. And I was the only one that was not sick in my family. And so I had to take on a responsibility. My whole entire routine changed. It became really busy. And at first it was isolating physically, and then it became isolating emotionally. And um, things started to be different in my life for a long period of time. Um, but during that time, God reminded me that He was faithful and that He was not changing even as things became to change. And I started to rest on His unchanging character. And um, I started to uh, rest that He's able, He has the power to change things. And in the end, um, He not only was able to heal my parents completely, to this day they are completely fine, but um, He protected me from receiving anything. And um, it was just being able to rest on the familiarity of Jesus' kindness and goodness and faithfulness, and just knowing that through the change that happened, and Jesus didn't change. And being able to rest on that was a big, big blessing. Jesus is the peace in my chaos. And I wanna back up a little bit on December 3rd this year, it was the fifth anniversary of my husband's memorial service. And my devotional that morning was Isaiah 25, eight and nine. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. And the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in salvation. December 4th, this year, my nephew Billy died. I find myself and many of those around me in the midst of chaos, the chaos of grief. So when I was asked to share, how is it that through the lens of the Christmas story, Jesus is the calm in the midst of my chaos, I began to see the Christmas story in a whole different light. For me, the Christmas story was always the sweet nativity scene. Joseph looking down upon Mary, who's gazing at her son. The wise men and the shepherds coming to adore and give gifts to the Christ child. A scene of calm, a scene of peace, 
But the baby Jesus is not the picture of the man Jesus. Isaiah 53 describes him as a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. Is grief in the Christmas story? Grief is the Christmas story. Grief and love. It grieved God to see his people turn their backs on him. It grieved God to be separated from the ones he loved. It grieved God that there was nothing and no one to save. John 3, 16 and 17 is truly the Christmas story. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. In my messy, chaotic grief, Jesus is not distant. When I walk through sorrow, I find solace in a friend who's been right there with me. He's gone through the same thing. There's a knowing, a comfort, a deeper connection that happens when someone has gone through the same thing that you have and comes alongside you. I cry for the loss of my loved ones. Jesus cried when Lazarus died and Jesus cried out when he was on the cross and he died for my sins. But resurrection followed his cries and my trust in Jesus and his word tells me that the same is true for me. The Christmas story defeated death. Resurrection is coming. So even in the chaos of my grief, I experience calm. Not only that, but I can rejoice. I will see Danny and I will see Billy again because I know that they believed in Christ. Remember my devotional? I am promised by God that he will swallow up death forever. He will wipe away my tears, and in that day we will rejoice. That is the Christmas story for me now, and that is my calm in the midst of this chaos. Wow, we've really enjoyed hearing a lot of these stories, even though I know these people. Yeah. It's good to hear what they have to yeah, say. Yeah, we, we don't really know what's going on inside their heart and their yeah. mind, and uh, we learn so much, and we love them even more, and I know that you do too. This evening has been really great. Again, it's not what we anticipated. It's not what we wanted. We'd rather be together, together, lighting our candles and having a wonderful time, but it just doesn't work out that way. And so right now in your life, it may seem somewhat chaotic, and. We hope and pray that some of the stories that we talked about tonight uh, can really speak into your experience mm -hmm. to offer calm in that chaos. One passage of scripture that, that we've been thinking about um, this holiday season, it's a very familiar one. It's in Isaiah, and Isaiah prophesied 700 years before the birth of Christ. And he writes these very, very familiar words in chapter 9, verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And the name of Jesus that I've been focusing on this last month, actually the nine months of COVID just about, is Prince of Peace. He is the remedy to the chaos. He is the calm that offers this. And, we, and when you think about the life of Jesus, you begin to see that. Um, disease comes into the world, he gets rid of it. Uh, demons come into the world, he gets rid of them. Elements destroy the people, he gets rid of the elements. Starvation can hurt the people, he gets rid of the starvation. And everywhere that Jesus went, 
there was this peace, this shalom, where everything that was wrong was made right, where everything that is real is made untrue. And that peace or that shalom is exactly what every single human being on the planet desires, but it can only be found in Christ. In fact, you and I were talking about that a little bit. So why don't you talk about that kind of peace? What I know I've, I've felt and you have felt and many of you have felt is this last Uh, year almost, Mm -hmm. and even especially this Christmas season, it's been so hard to find peace. Um, And where I have discovered it, where I think you have discovered it is in the body of Christ, is those little pockets of opportunity. Now they don't happen as easily. It's not like we are all together on Sunday morning. Takes a little bit of effort. Takes a little more effort, but those opportunities Mm -hmm. to be with another believer in Christ really just blows peace into my life. Mm -hmm. It gives me assurance that I'm not alone, that God is with us. And just to have that interaction is huge for me. And I think for you too, even though you're an introvert. Thank you so much. (laughs) I appreciate that. Well, even, I mean, we talk about peace from Isaiah and then you go to Luke two and where, what are the angels telling the shepherds? Peace on earth. Mm -hmm. Uh, Isaiah is saying peace is coming. The angels are saying peace has arrived. And that's our prayer for you, is that the peace of Christ rules your hearts and minds in Christ, that we can be able to, no matter what the situation is, no matter how chaotic it is, Christ becomes our peace. And we really hope that that happens for you. Well, and I think one more thing I Mm -hmm. just am thinking about is not only do, um, have you and I found opportunities and pockets of peace by being with other believers, but I think we have found opportunities to be the peace when we are with people, serving people Mm -hmm. who don't know him. Mm -hmm. I think of recent opportunities to have hot chocolate in the front yard. In that process of serving hot chocolate, the peace of Christ overwhelmed me, overwhelmed you, and I hope it bled out into our friends and our neighbors. Yeah, absolutely. His peace is there. We just have to look for different ways to... And that may be it. that may be one of the action points, even after Christmas Eve, after you've enjoyed, for us, it's Mexican food. Uh-huh. Um, and after you've enjoyed opening the presents, if you do it on Christmas Eve, for no. those of you who are unsaved, all right? But, but rather, all right, the, the peace of Christ needs to come into our life, but perhaps you are the answer to someone's prayer yeah. of being the peace. Yeah. And so there's, there's a couple of different ways to think about that that we hope that you can be able to do that. And, you know, as we wrap this up, you know, the phrases that are coming to mind are the things that you say every, what, every morning, oh, every morning on morning stir, stir yeah, is yeah. fear not, fear not. Jesus, Jesus is, is king, king live. live. And then you add, I want to add tonight, pray like crazy.
God of glory, majesty, praise forever, King of kings. That's what this has been all about. And we recognize in the Hardinger household that this Christmas is probably not the Christmas that we were hoping for. Uh, with COVID and everything that's going on in our country, it seemed like everything is just out there. It's just weird. And yet, because of the King of Kings, this God of glory, we are able to worship Him and live for Him, even amidst the most dire circumstances. We're so glad that you could join Arcade Church on this Christmas Eve, and we hope and pray from our home to yours that you have a very Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.